Again, we can look at polar zones, the regions above 66 and a half degrees north or below 66 and a half degrees south, if I can use above and below in, those, uh, in that kind of context, the polar regions. We generally see in the wintertime a very homogeneous water column mixed very deeply. In fact, it's in the, tropical, in the polar regions where we get formation of deep water, the water that occupies the very bottom of the ocean. So we will see conditions like uh, temperature that goes the, that's the same all the way from the surface all the way down to the bottom in polar regions. An extremely deep mixed layer. The only thing that limits the depth of the mixed layer is the, the depth of the bottom. In the spring, as again, sunlight comes up, and remember, sunlight in polar regions is basically six months of dark and six months of light. As that light begins to come up, it slightly stratifies the water column. It also does some other amazing things. It begins to melt the sea ice. As you recall from chapter seven, as sea ice melts, it begins to release some fresh water. That release of fresh water plus the warming rapidly stratifies the water column because fresh water sits on top. When that sea ice melts as well, it releases the algae that otherwise live in the ice, the, the, the little diatoms and, and ice algae that live within the ice. When that ice melts, they, get, it, they basically seed the water column, so they get released into the water column. So the stratification of the water column as the ice melts and, re and produces fresh water, as it warms up, and as the water column is seeded with phytoplankton, creates massive and very rapid phytoplankton blooms in polar oceans in the late spring and summer. That melting of the sea ice also, as well, lets light penetrate where deeper, where it couldn't penetrate before. So sea ice really governs the, uh, the sort of um, light environment uh, of uh, polar oceans and really it's that sea ice that's going to um, determine when and where primary production happens. It's also one of the things that we should be concerned of because without the sea ice, then we have a much different situation. We, do, we have no sea ice algae and, and it's possible that we have really um, complete absence of phytoplankton or very low concentrations of phytoplankton throughout the entire year in polar oceans because we then only rely on surface heating to provide the stratification to kick off the bloom rather than all the contributions that sea ice makes to the physical processes in the water column that lead to the bloom of phytoplankton in these polar oceans. But again, one bloom in the high latitudes, as I said before, a pretty much springtime type of situation. We don't get extreme stratification and it's really not enough. It doesn't last long enough in some cases and in many cases and on average, it doesn't last long enough to completely deplete the water column of nutrients. Now there are of course situations where we do get depletion of nutrients and, and stopping of the growth of phytoplankton, but by and large, this doesn't kick off enough to draw down nutrients all the way to zero. So again, take a look at all these different factors, go through each one of these, the daily light input, what's happening to nutrients, what's happening to phytoplankton and zooplankton, what's happening to surface water temperatures, what's happening to mixed layer depths and the vertical profile of tensure, temperature, what's happening with the depth of the photic zone and the mixed layer depth. And if you can understand all of this, you're an oceanographer because oceanographers understand how this works as a system, how the ocean works as a system, and this is a really good example of that process.